Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soul Seekers podcast, where we believe that hunting has the power to transform lives through primal adventure, as we share our mission of mentorship is conservation. To learn more about everything we do, check out our show on Carbon TV, or go to soulseekersnation.com. Freedom on, everybody, and stay soulful. This podcast is also proudly brought to you by Onyx Hunt. When I first got into hunting, I kept hearing all about public land and different access and how to find different locations to hunt. I was like, well, how are people even identifying all this stuff? Well, sure enough, I came across the number one hunting GPS app, and that is Onyx Hunt. If you guys want to want to get better at hunting and, and go deeper into your scouting, Onyx Hunt is the number one GPS app for that. Join the millions of hunters who trust Onyx Hunt to find more game, discover new access, and hunt smarter. It was a game changer for me, and I know it's going to be a game changer for you if you've never used it. If you have used it, you know the power that it holds. Guys, I really hope you enjoy this episode. If you want to know more about Onyx Go to onyxmaps.com forward slash hunt and check out their app. Be blessed, freedom on, and stay soulful. All right, guys, if you're in the market for a new hunting rifle this coming year, look no further than a Kelbley's rifle. I've been rocking their Coda rifle for the last couple seasons and I've had great success with it. It's an amazing shooter. And every time I put one of their rifles in somebody's hands, they're like, oh, I got to get one of these. Kelbley's holds over 92 world and national records that are either broken or set on one of their actions or rifles. So they really set a higher level of accuracy. If you want to know more about Kelbley's rifles, go to kelbley.com. That's K-E-L-B-L-Y.com. Tell them Johnny Mac sent you with Soul Seekers. And uh, go enjoy shooting that much more in this coming hunting season. Be blessed, everybody. Go check out Kelbley Rifles. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soul Seekers Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. We are live from the Corrupt Tech booth at the Western Hunting and Conservation Expo in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm joined by two amazing individuals who, this is the last day of the show, and forgive me for my voice, I got a little bit of a... Uh, well, I've been doing some talking this weekend, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm joined, I'm joined by Dustin and Dane of Hardside Hydration. They are phenomenal dudes, and I got to meet them, what is it, like three years ago? Was that your first yeah, time? Yeah, right here, first show, 2021. Years so they uh, created a product 22. called the Swig Rig. It's a better way to hydrate. So those of you who are sick and tired of having a hydration bladder, and your backpack gets stuck at the bottom or get punctured or all that jive turkey stuff. <laughs> they came out with uh, the best way to attach a, a hydration hose to a Nalgene bottle. Pretty right. much. Yep. And that was hard sided bottle. A hard sided bottle. So they are hard side hydration, rocking and rolling. And uh, once again, I apologize for my voice, everybody, but. So is life, and that's how it goes. So how's yeah. the show been for you, fellas? Good. I think I'm a little scratchy, too, from yeah. talking all weekend. I don't usually talk this much as I have all weekend. I have three kids, so I'm, I'm pretty pretty vocal. <laughs> 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 but it's been a great show, and uh, yesterday was just packed house here. Dude, yeah. it, was it was wild awesome. yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. It was hard to walk around. It was so busy. Yes. I, it. I told uh, Sam, and Sam's about to join us on this podcast here, um, Dude, you got to, like, bob and weave the entire time. Yeah. It, I was trying to get somewhere in a hurry, and that was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. No, dude. You're not and, getting anywhere in a hurry. Well, and then when you uh, start to be reunited with your friends down here, yeah, it's like if you don't want to stop and talk um, and – and get caught up with everyone, you got to like pretend you're on the phone or head down <laughs> yeah. or any of that. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, absolutely. I, I think we were, we were talking to, I don't remember who it was, but <clears throat> they couldn't make it 20, 20 yards without stopping to, you know, they were trying to get to the bathroom and they couldn't. Day one, Johnny and I were dehydrated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Dude, I needed a hard side uh, swig rig the entire time. Just like yeah. he did. It was funny. That's the, uh, so, with our booth, we stay stay well hydrated. You know, we, yep. Yeah, we got like one of those Yeti uh, cooler like, gallon, water. It's a six gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Silo type thing. Yeah. Like, you know, you, like the Gatorade thing. We got the yeah. Yeti one sitting there. It's filled with water. And 
I'm drinking over a gallon a day. Cause Johnny needed that taped so to rough. his back. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And especially how he walks. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, I was talking about that. <laughs> He's a quick what? walker. Oh, yeah, my oh. calves. Y'all should see him. <laughs> I have some friends that are like my, my one buddy. He's got he's he's a little you know he's stout, but dude, he's a quick walker. You're a quick gr- walker. I am. Yeah. Every huh. time we go somewhere, I'm trying to keep up. Well, Same geez, with my wife. Well, Maybe wait I'm till you meet my buddy. Walker. He's dude, like he's, Dustin. Bring that mic up a little bit oh, closer to your sorry, mouth. There sorry. you go, brother. Yeah. yeah no well, worries. Well, wait till you meet my buddy. He's like he would. He's the next. I'm in the middle then. So. Oh really? It's another level. He's another level. Oh, there's quick a spectrum walking. of walking. Where's Johnny at? We should just do. We should chest walk around the. Yeah. Here. Dude, time I, trial. I, ironically, <laughs> that we're talking about walking super fast is at the corner outside the hotel across the street. I ran into Josh Fields, who was on the podcast yeah. this weekend of Rocky Mountain Rocky Hunting Mount, Calls. Yeah. And he was like, dude, I'm late for a podcast with Christy Titus. I'm on my way. And I'm like, I respect how fast you walk. I like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. let's do this, baby. And just bob and weed, bob and weed. Just yeah. And then you're, and then some days you're questioning what, what footwear did I wear to the show? You know, like yesterday uh, I had the, I had the boots on, like yep. what you're wearing here, the nice uh, cowboy boots and jeans. And uh, we needed some product. So I was like, this is going to be, <laughs> I had to go all the way back to the hotel. We, we underestimated. Oh, really? <laughs> so you guys crushed it. We crushed yeah, it. Yeah, we did, we did yeah. well. It was nice. It was so a good I, weekend. A lot, got to see a lot of our old customers, which was yeah, good. Yeah, that's the best yeah. thing about it. Is, uh, what, what, is, what do you guys call What There's a term for repeat customers. Is I guess repeat customers. Oh, yeah, that's know. it. That's what the words yeah. were. That's right. I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the idea, right? You want people yeah. to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Definitely. That's how you we know want happy customers, and yeah. we'll do what we can to make them happy. Sure, and that's know? how you know you're doing something right. Yeah. In my yeah. eyes, you know. Well, that isn't, isn't it also like... Year one, you launch at the show. You hope you're well received, right? Right. Yeah. You're not yeah. really sure. Now you're th- third year in, and you have people selling your product for you, right? Like, yeah. right. Hey, go go check out Hardside. You got to get a swig rig, like phenomenal. When you guys came out with uh, the small adapter, yeah. Uh, what do you what do you call that again? Ultralight. The cap. ultralight cap. Yeah. Dude, I love that. And yeah, that was last year at the show. Okay, That's that was that year launched. two. Yep. We weren't even ready to put it on the website, but we're like, you know what? We should probably also put this on the website since we're launching it here at the show. So <laughs> I was doing that on the morning we opened the show here while we were trying to launch it. And stuff, Dude, so. that's so cool. <laughs> what sells more, the uh, the original or the ultralight? Uh, I think the original. When you're uh, in the original. booth, the ultralight. Re- yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, funny. It, no, it, it, uh, it does sell well. Um, when we're there too, but usually the the wide mouth. The wide mouth, probably yeah. just because of easy, to, are, easier to clean and yeah, stuff. People and, have those a ton of Nalgene bottles sitting around, or yeah. you know, so, and they're all always carrying them anyway. Do you know what's funny is about having a ton of Nalgene bottles? Is <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Same. I have a ton of them. <laughs> No caps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have no lids to my Nalgene's. I don't know where they've what disappeared. Happened? No idea. They're tethered right on the bottle. Dishwasher ate them. Oh, yeah. you then know you what? you take that, it off for the swig, Greg. You know? yeah. That's yeah. what it was. The, they uh, fell through the bottom and got melted oh, you know, yeah. in the dishwasher. That's great. Oh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about. How many bottle caps have you lost to that? Oh, gosh. I mean, I, I, I'm, I throw, I'm like a I'm, – I'm the reverse hoarder. <laughs> I'm the guy who will throw stuff away ahead of time and then yeah. severely regret it. <laughs> yeah, but two, yes, yeah. it does happen. Yeah. Two things there that th- make me think of moving was one is, uh, yes, I am now the reverse order too because <laughs> I lived in the same place for like 10 years. I'm like, no, now, now I'm the reverse order. Get rid of it. Yep. You don't need it. But uh, also having it, there's this little top, top, top rack of the dishwasher. It's that thing, I didn't even know it was there. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm asking my wife, where's, <laughs> like, hey, where's all this? St-? She's like, it's in the top rack. I'm like, there's another top rack. <laughs> well, you're kind of a big guy, so you got to bend yeah. down lower to actually yeah. see that there is a top right. rack. Right. But yeah, our household has a whole, we got a whole drawer of <laughs> stuff now with, with this business. So well, it's when just, I was over at your house, uh, when during hunting season, uh-huh. I opened the cabinet to get a drink and it's just <laughs> bottles just <laughs> all kinds of bottles uh, and i'm like you guys got enough bottles eh <laughs> yeah and Dude, of course you, but the kids need squeeze ones for basketball you know I'm like, yeah he always use an analogy bottle. <laughs> Ooh. you know what sam i think for our business uh idea we might need to incorporate hard side on this yeah. or soft side or something like that we'll yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> We're gonna. We might have a talk after we hit the stop. Right. stop so, can't wait, um, dude. You guys are originally from Michigan. 
Yep. Yes. Yep. And you, the land of whitetails and uh, all that, and you have just blown up to Western hunting. Here you are, Dane. You moved to you yeah. moved to the the motherland, the of, motherland. of Montana. Yeah. Yes. Not too long ago. How was that move for you? Man, it was it was great. Um, you know, um, just being having everything right out the back door and not having to to time the perfect weather for hunting season. And you know, you you uh, you ask for two weeks off or whatever, and you make that happen. And when you hope everything lines up, but uh, sometimes it's 85 degrees and you kill an elk. What what was or, that? <laughs> what he's not telling you here is the move itself. Oh yeah. Was rough. I'm trying to get you to move. Why would I say how bad it is? <laughs> well, I know. I already know what happened. Yeah, and John to you. knows too. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I moved 2,000 miles. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So we hired some moving company and whew, wouldn't do that again. I told Dustin, like, you move, man. Just, I'll be there. Whatever you, same with you, John. Yeah. I'll help any friend. I don't care. Right? I appreciate I say we start a no, no moving company uh, friendship. Yeah. <laughs> how, much, how much taxidermy do you have? Um, I had, you know, it's, I, I switched, um, you know, cause you know, my, I, uh, switched to doing a lot of Euro mounts myself. I like doing them. So yep. I'm glad I did, but I have, you know, I have some, I have some full, full mounts and stuff uh, or shoulder mounts. And that, so it's like, man, there, that takes up, you know, and so the much nose space. has got, you know, just everything is trying to. So I, when, uh, we moved from Washington down to Texas, we used the pods. Oh yeah. And I was like, we had too much stuff for for two pods, not enough stuff for three pods. And so it was like, okay, well, I guess this is not going with us. We're gonna sell this, we're gonna sell that. But the hardest thing that took up the most room was my uh, 305 inch Rocky Mountain uh, oh, the oh, shoulder sure. mount. Yeah. I'm like, oh dude. It's like a crate, yeah. you know? It's like a whole crate. <laughs> like be good. Jana Waller, <laughs> uh, she just moved from Montana down here to Utah and her house is nothing but taxidermy. Oh, man. And John, John Bear, her husband, was like, yeah, man, we need a semi-truck just for <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting their imagine. taxidermy down. Yeah. Um, are you, when are you going to make the move? Hopefully this uh, late spring, early summer. Oh, awesome. Cool. So. Yeah, we've been managing. You know, Dustin does a lot of the web stuff and, and, and some of the packaging and shipping, too. So we've been kind of managing. Uh, it's been running split, a business from been tough. Two, yeah. 2,000 miles away, but we're doing it. Dude, let me ask you this. Um, so it's kind of funny. It's a, it's a transition of I am a hunter. I am an outdoorsman. I'm consuming content. It's fun to watch YouTube and Carbon TV and check out this stuff. And then you're like, hey, I have an idea. Let's, let's make a product. And then all of a sudden you're in the industry. Yeah. Do you find yourself consuming uh, hunting content as much as you used to? Or do you find yourself not getting to hunt as much because now you're like, oh, well, hunting season is business season and, yeah. and all that. How does that go for you fellas? So we talk about that sometimes um, because we don't want to lose. Uh, we just, you know, part of the reason we started this is because we, you know, like to hunt and we like to be, you know, kind of part of the industry and we don't want to lose that. Right. So we're trying not to get too focused on, you know, the numbers or, everything going on with the business and just we definitely make time to hunt we were in some in a good way kind of we were fortunate to be out of stock of a lot of stuff during uh this archery fall. elk yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude so I, we could just we didn't even have to think about it you know we yeah. were just i had some people reach out to me they're like dude i went to go get a swig rig and they're all sold out <laughs> <laughs> it was our first first time of really truly being out of stock yep. some, switching some components and things so and we we're out on the mountain hunting so we we're like that's okay you yeah. know what's funny <laughs> is i feel like within the hunting industry where it's like how do we just leave a, uh, a note saying hey guys thanks for the support but we also love to hunt we're a user yeah. of our product uh, yeah. if you catch us between september 1st and whatever like <laughs> It's not necessarily the best business model, but like, you know, yeah. hey, we're still hunting. We're still getting after it. Yeah. So a long time ago, I was uh, interviewing with a bow company because I, I was trying to get into the industry. I really wanted to be a part of a bow company. I had a bunch of ideas for bow designs and stuff. Yeah. And You still do. Yeah, I do. But so I was interviewing with them, and, and I said, you know, I just I really enjoy hunting. And they're like, well, you know, we don't hunt much because we're so busy during that time of year. It's like, who's buying a bow during archery season? They're like, well, we have a lot of customer, you know, got to take care of customers during that time and stuff. So right, right. I, 
you know, to me, I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't want to be that company that doesn't get a chance to hunt. And we're in the hunting industry, you know? Yeah. So. How did you guys get started in hunting? What, was your father's, did your father's hunt or was it like get yeah. invited or what? Both, we, both of us, you know, our fathers hunted and, you know, yeah. the Michigan kind of um, whitetail, you know, my, my dad, my grandpa, every, it was just kind of something I was kind of born into and did it for my, since I could remember and, um, yeah. Yeah, my, all my extended family hunted. We had, you know, I grew up private land whitetail hunting, so yeah. it was a totally different animal than public land western hunting. Well, isn't there public land in yeah? There's Michigan tons of yeah, yeah. And my and like and my dad, um, you know, basically that's what he always hiked in, like you know, farther than anybody, and did you know, he'd have these trails, you know, before Onyx or anything, you know, it's like these paths, and you know, we're you know, it's just learning the land, and we'd go in like a couple miles and no, past every other hunter, but now everybody, those lands are getting, <laughs> everybody can find it now. But everybody anyway, goes deep now. Yeah, so that kind of I, I really enjoyed that, and then uh, we both, uh, I went out and you know I went. Uh, in college, I, I ended up deciding to go to this guide school. So that's what got me into Western hunting. Oh, and really? My love for Western hunting was uh, I went out and went to a horse packing school and did it. And then I taught the school for three years and four, you know, after that. So I just, that was in Wyoming. So I lived around Jackson and I would go out there in May and work until the snow got too tough. And Seriously? I'd fly back to Michigan. I'm like, oh, cool. It's perfect. It's a rut. So then I'd whitetail hunt, and then that was my college for, like, the last three years. And I, did, wow. I did graduate. But Dude, that is. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it was cool to do that. And, uh, yeah. That's sweet. And then um, and then finally, back 2018, I started going out. We got a group of guys and went out hunting. And then that's how Dustin and I came up with Hardside was yeah. in the backcountry in Colorado. We It was you had been you'd done some West Texas hunts, Dustin had. Yeah, right? so I was. You had done a little bit. I had of that to and got the taste of more of a spot and stock type of thing, and he's like, "Man, I'd love to go elk hunting." And we just, yeah. I was like, "Let's go." You know, I've been going since 2018, and it was 2020 maybe, or 21 when we first. Must went. have been 20. 20, so we went, and and then uh, yeah, he's we an engineer. In 21. And we you know realized we were coming up with all kinds of cool ideas to kill the time, and we talked about this little adapter we should that we wish we could make for these Nalgene bottles. And this dude started just making all kinds of awesome yeah. prototypes. And I was like, holy crap, let's, <laughs> this is awesome. Dude. That's how it started. Were you guys, how did you meet? Were you guys buddies? like Old man basketball. <laughs> yes. Did oh, you guys yeah. are hoopers. Yeah, yeah. 6 a.m. type of get Good together. Good stuff. And our so, wives and kids are in the same grade. And uh, we always got together and hung out and played cards. And yep. cool stuff. Our kids are friends, so that makes it easier. They're going yeah. to the same school. So. Not quite as cool as the dollar store, but still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that dollar store is cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I told you guys how Sam and I yeah. met, right? Yeah, dude, that yeah. was – that's awesome. It's oh. a real meat cute. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. thanks. Thank you. <laughs> that's like this morning I was getting a coffee in the hotel lobby there, and I was end up talking with a guy, and he's like, oh. it's, you know, it's just sometimes I think you're supposed to meet people. So he was really excited about our – you know, he just started asking me. What, I was – Ask him how his morning was going, and yeah, just kind of cool sometimes how life works. Dude, Absolutely. I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, I, I truly believe I everything I happens you. with purpose. Um, yeah. So it, it's amazing, like you guys meet, we meet, the four of us are sitting here together. Like, yeah, get out of town. It's the best. Um, it, who's a better hooper? Dane is. <laughs> yeah, he's the better athlete for sure. Dustin's got a good shot, though. I mean, oh really? Three point. Like, if if I if I can hit his it brother on a day, yeah. They're natural born uh, Dude, so, shooters out there. So be, me, I, I'm like rebound. Let's hustle. Like I, ain't, oh, you know, I ain't out. joking out. Like you're not getting. Like I'm boxing out. Yes, dude. Uh, my kids are. I'm like you guys are good. Yeah, you, know? you own. You got to take it to the next level. Yes, we own the boards. We're Williams. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can't jump. So, <laughs> dude, out. I I coached. Uh, man, I coached basketball for several years, and my focus with my kids is like you are gonna box out. You're going to rebound, yep. and you're going to run the court and get lanes, and we're going to kill teams by just laying it up. We, yep. don't, we don't have to. Like, if you get a good shooter, awesome. But just, yeah. dude, we'd run the court, get the ball up, get the ball up, get the ball up, get you know, yeah. and just pound teams into the submission. It was beautiful. <laughs> the town the town I moved to, Montana, they have a really good basketball program. It's, it's really exciting for my kids, so um, I'm just pumped for it. But, you know, just seeing them, you know, um, kind of fall in with the different – styles it's gonna be gonna be fun so dude, so i was watching a game yesterday morning like 9 30 my wife was there you know um we're doing some travel it's wrapping up now but uh, i was like all right i get to, to watch it so dude how how do you find so i struggle with this a lot ever since sports went woke 
yeah, right? Like right. the whole world of right. like, I, I don't want my hobbies or entertainment or whatever to be uh, infiltrated by the stuff that I don't support or believe. And so I just straight checked out of sports. I played college football and college lacrosse. Um, I got after it. I was a PE teacher, I coached, all this stuff. And now I'm like, man, I don't even, I don't even want to, my kids to do sports, but that, I mean, this is a bridge that we get to cross. Yeah. How do you guys manage being outdoor enthusiasts like you are, but also having a love for the game? You guys like, because weekends all of a sudden start to yeah. get eaten up real fast. Yeah. I'm not big on the travel ball type of stuff. Yeah. I, I don't love that. Um, you know, when I was a kid, people didn't need travel ball. You know, I get it. If you're, just you're obsessed with the game you know if your kid's obsessed with it and you can see that in them that's one thing but you know i think for every every kid it's different and at this point i'm not not about the travel ball my kids like their rest on the weekends and i'm good with that you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um my my take on it i i kind of get give the kids the option to do a lot of this stuff. And we're kind of feeling that out. We've never, this is the first time. And the travel ball was just a lot of, a lot of hoops during the winter. But then I, I saw the baseball schedule. I'm like, all right, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to be able to do all that. So yeah. <laughs> eight weekends, and you know, it's like with, with these ta total archery challenge events and everything, I'm already gone. And my kids love doing the archery too, you know. So it's more of like, hey, we'll play some Little League baseball and see how it goes from there. But, and, and I think it, for me it was important just to kind of, I was, you know, just gauge your your child and see. Yeah, it's you know, totally what, different. What, how they, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, they don't have to play all the sports, but I definitely, I like, I feel like it just builds that that toughness, you know, right. good for me, and mm -hmm. I, I try to encourage it, but uh, I don't want to push them to, uh, you know, it, not do it. But and then incorporating hunting with it too is is fun. So how old are your kids? So mine's about to turn 12 next month. And our my my oldest, oldest, and is then the same. my youngest is nine. 12 to, 12 to going to be 8 in April here, so like 12 to 8. Okay. I have three, so Dustin has two. How do you guys go about navigating your personal hunting and the desire for you to be like, well, I still want to fulfill my own soul versus yeah. oh, I need to make sure I bring my kids in or have dedicated hunts for them? or Have you guys really like had to dive into that yet? He um, has a ton. I have a lot, and, you know, and, and for me it was um, – one thing I found as I got, as my kids got a little older and I could start including them more. I mean, I'm talking four years old in a in a in a tree stand with a harness on. Really? They're in there, you know. Really? I had yeah. two of them in a in a double ladder, and I'm standing the whole time. We killed deer like that. It was awesome. But I mean, I took them from okay. day one as soon as I could get them up there. But um, what I found for myself was to be able to, you know, it's really hard to check out or to, you know, when you're home to really get into the hunt for me. So. It was nice to do some like do this western hunt for 10 days and it was where i could go like push myself and go you know um, get uh get was out get what i was looking for out of the hunt and and then coming back to being able to be like all right that was awesome now look you know they'd be fired up to to get out there so that's kind of what i i found was um it was a little little easier to i i got a little less serious about hunting around my around close to home but you know yeah. now we got this yeah. you know i'm in montana it's like it's year round I mean, spring bears coming up. You know, we out, there's elk seasons. Uh, you know, bee tags that go till January 15th and uh, start mm -hmm. September 1st. So it's uh, figuring. And my son, um, they were able to do the youth hunt last year. And you know, I didn't even kill. <laughs> they they were able to uh, harvest a, a nice a nice whitetail. Um, but you know, just some. But you know, I get them included in the whole process. You know, um, we're gonna we butcher it. We you know they. They, they break the game down and just seeing all that it's so awesome right they, they a kid knows it instantly that this is this is food you know when when they when they're out there doing that and my kids love it whether it's fishing or whatever you know they they want they they can yeah you know. yeah for me my oldest is really interested in hunting he likes it so uh in michigan you know i i'm kind of over sitting in a stand waiting for deer for whitetail it's yeah yeah it's uh hard for me to get into but he likes doing that so you know i haven't i haven't uh really picked up a gun for whitetail in a number of years because it's been since he's been able to hunt we've been going hunting for him so um but you know he hasn't been able to elk hunt yet because yeah. so, and you've been doing some western hunts too you know yeah. and hard side it's like juggling i know all that, you know it's just like you have to 
you really got to pick and choose, you know. What, yeah. Sam's about to have a second kid in March. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. I, it's funny you saying, talking about you're putting your kids in the blind at four years old. Yeah. Because this last year, my son hunted with us, and yeah. it was, uh, he did he did way better than I expected. You know, I went in with open yeah. mind thinking, all right, this is going to be, yeah. you know, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah. But, hey, we saw deer, and it was great. It, it, I was I was happily surprised, and yeah. he loved it. Seeing deer is great, with yeah. you know, and just finding and making it a quick, short little, you yeah. know, say you, you're in there for an hour, but, you know, and. I hate, you know, even if you have to use a device for, you know, Mike, <laughs> yeah, you don't, but just something to pass a little time, sure. you know, um, just something to keep them warm and, you know, keeping them really f snacks, you know, it's the same. Yeah, the snacks were the big thing for snacks. my youngest. Oh, That's yeah. all he wanted to go hunt. He's not interested in hunting, but he wants the snacks. Well, yeah. And that's all it's about. Like, we wouldn't see any deer when he, and I don't know if that's why he's not interested in hunting, but all he ever wanted was the snacks. Yeah. yeah. And to be with dad. No, yeah. just the snacks. Oh. He would have been cool to sit there alone well, with the snacks. I think my oldest might be like more that style. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I I picked up like a pack of I don't know gummy bears or whatever, which I always take when I'm Western big game hunting, but I'm not like just gonna pound them with sugar, right? Yeah. Like, okay, bud. I go. We're only eating these when we kill. It'll be oh. celebratory. Celebratory. Yeah. yeah. And so he uh, opened up the. Oh, what's the what's the little cubby on the passenger side of a vehicle? Glove the, box. The glove box. I don't know what, dude. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> don't don't roll your eyes on me, bro. <laughs> Anyways, he opened up the glove box the other day and he saw the gummy bears. He's like, "Oh, dad, can we eat those?" I was like, "No, man, not until." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. That's, awesome. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, dude. I, um, navigating being a father and being a husband. But my my big thing is I will always choose my wife. Yeah, that's right. Before I am hunting too. and before any of this stuff, which is cool. Yeah. But like, I chose her before I I got into this. How does your wife's wives handle all this? Mine, uh, I mean, both our wives are incredibly supportive. Uh, you know, they're <clears throat> managing everything while we're here at the show. Yeah, yep. and the and total archery challenges. Yeah, I mean, and this this is work, right? But it's a lot of fun. It's fun yeah. work. I mean, it's hard right. to say like. It's grueling. I mean, maybe standing all day it gets old, but you're talking with good people. You're meeting customers. You're having fun. You right. get to see all kinds of cool new stuff. It's a blast. And, you know, they're back, like for my wife, she's back in Michigan where the weather's not great. <laughs> and she's managing the kids and work and all this stuff. And it's certainly not a, not a fun trip for her, you know. So, but... She's got a great attitude about it. They they've been really supportive of of all we're doing with hard side and yeah, trying to do that stuff. And and for me, um, it took me in the jobs I had. I was always in a real uh, urban environment, and it was hard to meet people who shared uh, a love of hunting or even just being outside the same way. You mm -hmm. know, if if it was outside, they were like, "Oh, let's go to the park." I'm like, "This is there's paved trails like." We're not, this is just, it's yeah. not the wilderness, you know? Right. Um, but so when, you know, when I moved up by Dane, it was a lot easier to find, finally find friends that shared some of these passions. And so she was happy for me with that. And so she's been really great about knowing I'm going to be gone a lot in September for hunting and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how are you going to navigate this? Man, uh, you know, growing up, I I've dated my I dated my wife for a long time before we got married and through high school and whatnot. So uh, she grew up with me in in sense, right? Yeah. And hunting was just such a big part of my youth and growing up. I mean, she she was hunting with me as soon as we started dating. I mean, right. it was uh, she was there with me, and uh, it was new for her because her her dad never really hunted, never. He was so busy working, he never really had time to hunt. He did when he was younger, you know. But uh, so her growing up with me hunting, she she got to see what it what it did for me, and and got to experience it herself. So she she knows how much how much how important it is for me. And so uh, w once we had our first son, you know, she was like, "All right, you know, uh, you need to get out there and do it because I know what it does. You know, I know how it." I know how you are when, when you don't get it, and uh, I, I know you need it. You earn for it. Mm -hmm. And so she was really understanding of it. And uh, plus, I mean, in reality, we, 
that's all really we only eat wild game mm, i mean we're good. lucky enough to to be able to take enough deer every year that that we don't we don't go to the grocery store for meat yeah between getting uh you know ranch beef cut and 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 harvesting deer that's all we eat so like this year she was like hey you know we've got a three-year-old and she's like hey look like uh we need meat yeah so uh let's go get it done and, yeah. and she was driving me through it so two children we'll awesome. see what happens <laughs> uh my four-year-old he'll be four and yeah. uh so he will be hunting with me a lot more yeah and so we'll be fighting that fight and uh Doing that, That's so he's awesome, gonna be rolling bro. with dad quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, he's gonna the get legs get a little longer. They can keep up. They can, oh yeah. Well, they, they, I, I got a kind of a crazy story. My wife was hunting this year while pregnant. Yeah, and because uh, she was she was like, I want to set the stand. So I'm like, heck yeah, let's get out there. She was hunting, and uh, so my wife's like, well, what are we gonna do with Bo? And I said, well, he'll roll with me. And so we were running around the ranch in the jeep. We got on some hogs, and I said, all right, Bo, we're gonna go get it. We're gonna go stalk these hogs down. So I threw him on my back. <laughs> we're trotting through the brush you know and so he he's getting indoctrinated to it so I, I i think that him hunting with me and and we're just gonna have to fight through that and uh i think it'll be good I, i'm looking forward to it just kind of navigate it as we go huh yeah yeah it's it's uh it's fun do your wives hunt mine has <coughs> mine does and she actually like this this fall there was a uh, it's a ven venry out of montana it's a it was like a, a women's uh a waterfall class and it was a whole weekend oh, event. And it happened to be venery put on by yeah. Alex. Yes, with Alex. Yes. yes. And um and um so she went to uh, their women's waterfall weekend, and we have been out duck hunting, but it was so awesome. They, you know, she got to they they went through a bunch of stuff, and then you know they actually went hunting and they cleaned the ducks, and then they they cooked Great. the cooked and uh, cool. So it was so cool because we have some uh, ref wild uh, waterfall refuges by us and stuff. So. Um, the one morning, I, I kind of helped them and got the truck ready, and uh, she, that was like her first time taking the boys, and my oldest is 12, so he was a big help, and my middle one's 10, but she took the older boys, and they went out and did a duck hunt. That is no awesome. way. And, uh, they went out, you know, they, they, there's some That's blinds that are set yeah. up. It was so, that was, a, but that was the first, you know, so she was really excited about that, and uh, lead so, in charge. So, That's yeah, awesome. yeah, I like and, that. you know, and as our youngest is seven or eight, so we're, we're really, we're not looking forward i mean we're looking forward to the future as far as being able to you know do some backpack hunting western hunting you know but we know that time's coming so we're just enjoying what we have but yeah you know so but uh, the waterfall will be cool for her and uh but uh yeah what, was that something that she led the charge on like i want to hunt or is it like hey babe will you yeah. hunt and then like we can all go do it yeah i think um similar to sam as uh you know when we were getting married we, we had all this time and this is what i did so i always we just she went with me and she got into archery and stuff and and uh you know and as you know as we started having children you know that that time kind of decreased a little but with hope to do it in the future kind of thing so right so now we're getting to that age of like hey you know our kids are can kind of stay our oldest is 12 and they're they're able to kind of stay home for a little bit and right so we can go hunting for an evening or something so uh so yeah, I think that, that there'll be a lot more of that in the future. So perfect. Yeah, my wife uh, likes hunting, but she doesn't like to hunt. She doesn't want to hunt. You know, yeah, yeah. shooting. She, she likes shooting too. Yeah, some yeah, she, yeah. She doesn't mind yeah. shooting uh, guns, not bows, but yeah. she likes that, and she likes being around. She likes the idea of you know having you know eating wild game and stuff yeah, yeah. but we've been in meat crisis for a while oh that's the <laughs> worst I, yeah. I completely understand yeah so that is the worst i didn't i didn't get the job done uh this past fall so we're we're in trouble dude meat crisis is horrible <laughs> yeah the, at starting carnivore diet i'm in meat crisis all the time oh yeah <laughs> dude, I'm, like, yes. I'm like dude are you doing carnivore oh yeah well no. I, we broke it yesterday semi-carnivore uh, well no so i went um <laughs> Wednesday was day 46 of oh, wow. of into carnivore, uh, but on the way to this trip, I was like, Sam, I think I'm ready to just have something like hit the spot. And I go, what what's gonna be the one thing that if we were gonna break this, that you would want? He's like, cheesecake. Oh. And ooh. so I was like, well, our, tooth, huh? our hotel yeah. is man after my heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Our hotel's two blocks away from a cheesecake factory. Oh, I was wow. like, let's, we're going to get a cheesecake then. I will totally join you. So we went in lunchtime yesterday. Didn't even get, like, any other food. We just sat down, had a cup of coffee and a cheesecake. And Ooh, I was like, wow. But, yeah, doing carnivore, love it. I'm sleeping better than I ever have. I've dropped over 20 pounds. Um, I'm just feeling sharp and snappy. 
Um, it's awesome. It's awesome. So here's one thing I always wondered about that, and I really don't know. What's the impact on, like, cholesterol levels and stuff? Well, I mean, yeah, your cholesterols are going to – could potentially get higher, but your triglycerides are still good. Yeah. Like, here's – like – we internally know when we feel good or don't feel good, right? Right, right. Right, like you wake up after eating a bunch of fast food and you're sluggish and you're like, oh, that was a bad decision. Yes. I would never have a bad day where like, I don't feel good. Yeah. I used, uh, this last fall, I was taking a walk with my wife one morning. It was like Saturday morning, uh, sun was out, beautiful day. I should have been like on top of my game, but I felt horrible. And I looked at my wife, I was like, when was the last time you felt optimal? Like you felt your best self? And she's like, man, not for a while. She struggled with some autoimmune diseases and stuff okay. like that. And, and I'm like, I, wa I want to feel that. So I gave up beer last May, not because like alcoholic or any of that type yeah. of stuff. I was like, dude, beer made me not feel good. A lot of carbohydrates. I'm there too. It's yep. like, you know, I, yeah. I'll get the idea that I should. I should try a beer and it just no i don't feel good the right. bubble guts yeah. the next day and it's yeah. like yeah so i just drop beer uh i'll do whiskey bourbon is what i what i prefer but i'm not even like drinking that much and i was like i just need to get healthy i want to make sure that well i'm a leader you guys are leaders you're business leaders you're you're leaders in your family in, in your homes mm -hmm. um you're not going to be able to lead others if you can't lead yourself and yeah. it was time for me to put my foot down and be like, okay, it, it's let's get serious. Got to decide when you're going to make some changes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, uh, I started doing a – my buddy, he lives out in the state of New York. He runs a program, Seek to Do More. He was super fat. He hit 300 pounds. Shout out to James Appleton. He's the host, <laughs> host of the 46 of 46 podcast which is the 46 peaks of the Adirondack Peak, uh, oh, the park uh, up in cool. New York. And so he uh, started hiking and dropped all this weight and got healthy and all that. And he was like, hey, man, um, I know you want to get your life back on track and all that. I want you to do my – he does 90-day coaching, but he's like, I got a 30-day recalibration program. I was like, okay, I'll start at January 1st. So I'm official NAB uh, card holder, which is uh, – I am, I, <laughs> I am, I am not a bitch. Yeah. So any time that I'm like, uh, oh man, that sucks, or I don't want to do that, it's like, no man, I ain't no bitch. Let, yep. Let's go, power through it. Yeah, yeah. it's good. That's so awesome. I mean, it's a great like, and it's a mind shift, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it is such. We are blessed to work out. I am blessed to drink water. I am blessed to really dive in and live my most best optimal life. So that I can continue dominating the mountains with my children for years to come. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to be that badass. Only got so many seasons left, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Once you hit that age, you're like, oh wow. Oh, you never. It's going know. fast. Right. You know? I hit 40 in May this year. Yeah. And Congratulations. Thank you. And I, welcome. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> How old yeah. are you, fellas? I hit uh, 40 in May of 2023, so I'll be 41. April. Your April. birthday's in April. Oh, yeah, in April. Oh, I, said, <laughs> I said May, but I, meant, I Yeah, you know what I'm saying. April last year, so I'll be 41 in April. Yeah. So, well, this is what I love about, uh, about the hunting world. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Apologize. Is you just started your business at, look, 38, yeah. 39 years old. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's never too late like yeah. type, type of thing. Yeah. Um, do you guys ever just kind of stop and be like, dude, this is pretty sweet where we're at? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, I, it's, yeah, sometimes, just like we were talking this morning, it, you know, it goes back to having, like, repeat customers or whatever. Yeah. So we, you know, when we started, we started selling online. And we recognized the first customer we had that we didn't know right? The yep. first stranger who bought someone something from another state. Yeah. And that was really cool feeling. That right. was awesome. And then we had the opportunity to meet them oh. at Western Hunt Expo. Really? They stopped by. They knew we were going to be there our first year. And so and she said her name and we were like, I know your name. Yeah. <laughs> and so That's, your name is you're the first person to ever just, you know, find us and purchase Purchase something without, yeah. you know, and so not a friend or something, you know. We see them at TAC, 
you know, we see them every every year. They've stopped by and said hi to us here, and it's been great. We went to the uh, Mountain Tough workout the other morning. Oh, and um, sore. Kiernan, Kiernan was there, who was, you know, your one first, of the first, first customer. First dollar. Yeah, and so he we we Ubered there, and he ended up driving us back to our hotel afterwards. So now he's like our first customer. He's our Uber. He's, you know, he was inviting us hunting before the show. We couldn't do it unfortunately, but. You know, it's just cool. You you build these relationships. That's incredible. It's just neat to have, like, know that they were the first customer. They were a complete stranger, and now, like, we know them. Yeah. You know, they're well, friendly. You, you so. definitely created an impact with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, it's been cool to, you know, and that's with a ton of customers sure. you get to know. Absolutely. and. He's got a great memory for faces, so <laughs> he'll see somebody be like, I met you at Tech, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Dude, I love that. I remember faces very well. I yeah. don't remember names. I'm, I'm real yeah. bad with names. Being a school teacher of 18 years, um, dude, people would be like, oh, Mr. Mack, Coach <laughs> Mack. And I'd be like, right on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, sport. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. What is it? The movie Hangover. He's like, it's a weekend, but Nick, I do not know you. You do not yeah. exist. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. Um, What's on, what's on the, the horizon for you fellas? More products. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just more growth, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, like this year, you know, it was uh, just for this show. We didn't really launch. Like, we, were, we are carrying some Yeti products, which is cool. You know, we have a lot of different bottles now, some different options. But, uh, you know, we, we uh, made some changes this fall, which is why we were out of stock of that stuff. Because we were like, all right. Before we do anything else, we gotta let's just make these couple changes. We gotta do these little things that yep. if we, because you know we're, you know we're just trying to make the best product that for our customers. You know we really right. that's what it comes down to. You know, we made this we made our this setup for ourselves. Our our, our company our <laughs> was born off of like trying yeah. to solve a solution for ourselves, and then like all right we can do this. But you know so um, so once we uh, we just accomplished that those those things, and now it's on to. Uh, some some pretty cool ideas we have so so last year you know dane moved to montana this year i'm hoping to that'll complete the whole company moving out there and then uh hopefully we'll be able to you know focus more on new new products and stuff so yeah what about hunting though like yeah oh yeah you guys got a team man sorry guys i apologize you guys got a team hunt going on or what yeah, I, I don't know if I can't draw a tag in Montana. I already told you we're going to, Col- you know, yeah, we'll, we'll go, go to Colorado. We'll go to Colorado. We have lots of I'll points. I'll just be packing for him. You know, it's, it's been. Time. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I guess we could use points. But yeah, we have. I don't but, really want but to. But we'd yet. have to decide on that. So, but anyway, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll be doing, we'll be hunting Montana. And then uh, next year we'll be starting to, we have some Wyoming stuff and kind of get out and do yeah. that. So you, <clears throat> Sam. Dude, I am, I'm struggling on the <coughs> voice today, man. Dustin was pretty, your, your voice is better it's, today. It's a it's lot on. better day. I rested it, and it's been Yeah, been like, <laughs> sorry, guys, I'm not talking today. Here's a chalkboard. Um, <laughs> coming to the Western Hunt Expo for you, yeah. is it like, okay, I want to get west more. I want to hunt west. Oh, you, yeah. all, you already have done that a few times. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, what's that been like for you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really been eye-opening to see all these uh, neat people and talk with them and, and talk about experience and, and – uh, being from Texas, you know, we don't, we, Texas has a lot to offer, so I haven't, yeah. you know, I've hunted a lot in Texas. Uh, yeah. I've hunted Wyoming, uh, out in sand dunes and whatnot, okay. and uh, uh, Colorado a few times, but now I'm like, okay, like, there's a lot out here. Um, it was really eye-opening, and, and I'm excited to see what, what happens in the future. Yeah. Have you guys hunted Utah yet? No. No. Is that on, on the list? I don't think it's in, it has in the next few years that we've talked about, but we we did talk about going and grabbing one of the over the counter tags or something. Yeah, but I, I, I think know. I'm gonna I'm shooting for archery elk this year here. Are you? Yeah. That's Where do you know? What area? Utah. <laughs> no, so, Utah. Utah. <laughs> Up Nunya Northern, Creek. Yeah. <laughs> Nunya <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the thing I had like I feel like you know starting to look at a new state is so difficult because. You gotta, you gotta learn, you know, the licensing yep. the system. Then you gotta learn the units, and then you gotta, you know, figure out. Okay, is this a draw? Is it not a draw? You know, when when can I actually do it? There's just a lot of research that I feel like goes into it. Mm-hmm. So, it, it is overwhelming. Yeah. Like, 
I'm about to do a podcast here uh, with Onyx about diving into because they're creating a tool to help with that. Yeah. You know, because as much as as much as it can be done and people do it year after year, for there's, I feel like uh, where you guys went to college, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're registering for courses and you had to pick your like degree and like yeah. you had you open this catalog and it's like. <sighs> Where do I start? That's what I feel like hunting regulations are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but in college a lot of times you have an advisor, right? Who's Correct. like, this yeah. is the path you need to take. So Yep. So my recommendation for all you listening is uh come to the Western Hunt Expo and start meeting people and a lot of doors open up. Have, have you guys yeah. experienced that where it's like, Oh dude, yeah, hey, you want to hunt the state? Let me help you. I'll I'll take care of you on that. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> but you know, there's so much that the West has to offer, so many different places, so many different states, right, and yep. so many different species. It's hard to, you know, Narrow you only down. have so much time, so many years, so many points you can acquire, figure that out. And then the laws are always changing, too, it seems like. Right, yeah. Yeah. And even more now than yeah. ever, I feel like. Yep. Hey, I heard uh, coming to Michigan for black bears pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, uh, I've harvested a black bear in Michigan. It was awesome. Was that um, a tree stand? It, yes, it was. But um, I have some friends that have hounds and stuff too, so we had backup oh, planned for that. Sweet. But I really wanted to do it out of a tree stand. And uh, but the you know it's a, a process of uh, you know baiting and was that over that was over bait? it was over bait you know and even a lot of the hounds guys will, will run bait. They are legally allowed to do so many different bait sites. Yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, that was that was a, it was a quite a, you know a couple of weeks of that uh, trying to lead up you know a month actually, you can start, you know, but yeah. It's In Michigan, good. it's a lot less common to glass up an animal and go yeah. after it. It's, right, because it's thicker. It's, thicker. it's hard to yeah. do that. Yeah, you're you're waiting and using trail cams to pattern and try and figure out what's going on in an area hunting bears is like hunting white tails you yeah, got you know, a like, lot of times yeah, yeah. Just put your stand on a tree that's on a game path and yep. where's yep. the water and all that and kind of just figure that yep. out yeah wait them out and guys will use a lot of the you know you're, you're looking for tracks and stuff kind of like the hounds guys do it yeah for lions and stuff uh, that's one thing i like about hunting is like you you come i come from texas we do it away yeah go up to michigan y'all run hounds deer do you know deer drives yeah and stuff mm -hmm. like that and then you come out here and it's like oh no yeah. make some miles and it's yeah it's exciting yeah so uh when i lived in texas i did a uh a sheep hunt in west texas yeah and that's really what got me turned off to sitting in a blind waiting yeah, for absolutely. a white tail because after that i was like wow this is this is a lot of fun. It's engaging. You're out moving the whole time. Yeah. And it was an awesome hunt. And yeah, that, 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 it's funny you say that because a lot of people think of Texas and it's like, all right, we're going to sit in a tree stand and watch this corn feeder go off. But you start going out west and head south. I mean, there, there's yeah. a lot of stuff out there to see. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, I, that that sheep hunt was incredible. It was uh, fun. I mean, you got to hunt whatever's going to be the most effective, but spot and stock rocks, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like being on the move. Yep. Yeah, oh. and that's what that's what we did. Like the first the the ram I shot, we glassed him up from like a mile or two away, and he was skylining on a ridge. And so we went, you know, we drove a long way to this mountain, and we got to where we were going to go up over the backside of the ridge, basically. And the the group of sheep, I don't know, they're herds. Yeah, I guess herds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. They were heading over the backside already, so we got to the ridge where he was. And we could see down to where they were like going down the rocks the other side, and uh -huh. I was able to drop to a knee and shoot him. That was that was awesome. I was like, oh, I'm doing this more, you know. Sweet, so, I like sweet. It. That was fun. I love it. Well, we all got to get together for a hunt. Yeah, we like, should. Let's let's put that. Um, if it doesn't happen for 2024, let's make it as a priority for 2025. I can't believe I'm saying that year already. Yeah. It's, it's wild, it's crazy. Um, but let's do that. That, that'd that be would be super fun. epic. We'll film it for an episode of Soul Seekers and just go out there crushing. Maybe we come to Montana yeah. or you guys come down to Texas or we meet up in the middle somewhere. But let's let's do that. Yeah, so. for sure. Heck yeah. All right. Well, guys, it, the show is starting to rock and I don't want to keep you from your booth. But yeah. uh, any last things, Sam? Man, it was. Uh, I really enjoyed talking with y'all and, and uh, this, this show has been really cool. Yeah. I love it. 
Dude. Thanks for having yeah, us on. It's been fun. Oh, it's been thanks a pleasure. For time. It was yeah. Great to meet Sam. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, all you listeners out there, go get yourself a hard side hydration. I, is the code still active? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, what is Soul Seekers 15 or is it 10? Soul, I don't know. <laughs> 10. Soul Seekers 10, I think. <laughs> now you got everybody all excited. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right? geez. Okay. So, listen to this podcast. Type in Soul Seekers. 15. 15. There we go. Changing it. There we go. <laughs> Soul Seekers 15. Save 15%. Uh, check out on Hard Side Hydration, Swig Rigs, and all that. Uh, hydrate better this coming fall on all your adventures. Dane, Dustin, thank you so much, fellas, for being here and being a part of this episode. Uh, we're going to have to get you back on after the recap of your hunts and let us know how those go. Yeah. Awesome. So, brothers, really appreciate it. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. If you have not gone to Carbon TV and checked out Season 4 of Soul Seekers, go do so. You can catch older episodes on there as well, as well as they are hitting YouTube this spring as well. Be blessed. Freedom on. Remember that hunting has the power to transform lives through primal adventure. I'm Johnny Mack for Dustin and Dane at Hardside Hydration, Flatland Sam. Freedom on, everybody, and stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast and want to support the show, you can always like, share, subscribe, and leave a rating as it helps us share our mission of mentorship is conservation. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of Soul Seekers Nation as we transform lives through primal adventure. If you want to get more connected with the podcast, check out the Soul Seekers Nation Facebook group as I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. So stay tuned and stay soulful.